Hello, I am Denshi, and today we're going to be talking about how to install and use Intel-Undervolt, a tool for undervolting your relatively modern Intel CPU in your machine running a Arch Linux. I figured most people watching this channel probably are using a relatively modern Intel CPU. I'm sorry for anybody using AMD or older Intel CPUs or older AMD CPUs for the matter, but I don't really have any AMD machine with me at the moment, and any Intel machines I have aren't really fit for recording at all with older CPUs use that I could test older tools on, but we're going to be taking a look at Intel-Undervolt today, which is the best documented, but still relatively scarcely talked about undervolting tool for Arch Linux. So first of all, as this article says, misconfiguration of CPU voltage settings might result in permanently damaged hardware. You gotta be careful with this kind of stuff. There are recommendations like, oh, you shouldn't reduce this past this, or you shouldn't do this, or you shouldn't do that in the article, but you never know. And unless you sort of have an understanding of what you're doing, you probably shouldn't be using these tools or at least should use highly recommended settings and things that are well tested. In this tutorial, I'm hopefully going to give you a general outlook of what's safe to undervolt on your CPU, you know, the kind of metrics you should be aiming for. But this is all at your own risk. If you mess up your hardware, don't blame me or the creators of the software. It's your fault. And this could lead to permanently damaged hardware, so you have been warned. So the first thing you're going to want to do is install Intel-Undervolt. So it's going to be sudo pacman s intel dash under volt and as you can see there it's installed and there it is we're going to want to run every single one of these commands with sudo because we're changing important hardware level stuff so sudo intel dash undervolt read will give you readings of your current undervolting situation which at the moment is nothing's really been changed because we haven't modified anything yet you could also do sudo intel dash undervolt measure to give you live metrics on what's going on in your cpus so at the moment you can see that some are clocked at you know, 800 megahertz, some go up to 1000. These are all the megahertz. These are the temperatures and these are the actual wattages of the various parts of the CPU and the entire package itself as well. We're going to want to modify a file. So sudo vim or whatever text editor of your choice called intel-undervolt.conf. So it's there, it should be generated when you install the software. And you go in here and you can change a lot of settings in here that are really useful. So the first thing we're going to want to do is, well, you can undervolt your parts. So if we scroll down here in the ArchWiki article, or even just in the actual software's GitHub repository, you'll notice that you're recommended to do at most 100 to 200 millivolts of undervolting. So what we're going to want to do here, let's say we want to undervolt our CPU by 100 millivolts. So we're going to want to do dash 100 on that. Let's say we want to do the same thing for the GPU. So that's the integrated Intel GPU and our CPU cache. Okay. So we write those changes to that file. Now we can run sudo intel-undervolt apply. And that applies those settings. And as you can see, those show up there. And if we do a sudo intel undervolt measure, you'll notice that those settings should generally apply. You'll see results in the amount of wattage used and specifically maybe in temperature, thermals, or other things. Like maybe your, your stuff might not clock as fast as it did before because you're giving it less power. Anyway, that's enough for that basic stuff you can do where you can just undervolt. Once again, as the article says, you're not recommended to reduce these past 200 or so. I mean, most of the time, dash 100 is what you're really going to want to need. Anything past that, and what's going to happen is you're going to have your CPU start being inefficient for the power it's using. So it might use less power in the short term, but because it's going to take longer time to do certain things, especially if you're doing you know, web browsing for a long session or whatever, what you're going to end up with is more power consumption over time. But anyway, let's do a couple of other things. Like, for example, we can reduce the maximum power that our things can consume. So for example, here we got this power package syntax we can add. We're going to want to delete the undervolting settings we have here, because what I'm going to do instead is limit the wattage of our CPU package itself. So power package to the you know, specifically for the package. And what we can do is set two numbers, our short term reduction and our long term reduction. So short term is only going to apply for a certain amount of time we tell it to. And long term is also going to apply for a certain amount of time. Let's say I want a reduction to the minimum of five watts and I want this to last five seconds so five slash five but then I want it to go back up to 12 as its cap and I want this to last for 20 seconds we're going to want to write and quit and now we can do sudo intel dash under volt apply and as you can see it has set those so if we now decide to measure 
you'll notice that our package power stays around five or six, and now that those five seconds are over, it's slightly, you know, it's going past five, because we've given it, we've increased that cap, and our CPU can now allow itself to reach 12 watts at most. So what this is really useful for is reducing the wattage of your CPU, getting straight to the issue itself, and reducing how much power your CPU itself is using, which is quite useful. There's one last thing I want to talk about in this video before we end, and well, apart from just deleting this line over here, we can do something with the temperature. It's basically how this works is you have a cap temperature on your CPU. In most computers, that should be around 100 degrees Celsius, maybe 90 degrees Celsius on some. But essentially what you can do is with the TG offset option, so if I have 100 degrees Celsius as my cap, I can do dash 15 to say, okay, I want my cap to be 15 lower than that. So instead, I'm going to get 85 degrees Celsius as my maximum temperature. You might have noticed that our maximum temperature or temperatures being reached are around 50 or so. So let's say we want to reduce this by uh, 40, and that should genuinely, hopefully help us in some way. So if we do until undervolt measure you'll see we're reaching around 58 degrees 57 degrees celsius right now and now if we apply apply as you can see negative 40 degrees celsius as our critical offset we measure again you'll notice not much is changing because we haven't really reached that cap so now i'm going to run something very cpu intensive i'm going to convert a video with ffmpeg I'm gonna set it to the highest possible quality just so I can really stress my CPU and now I'm gonna run it. So that's gonna put a lot of stress on my CPU and as that happens, you'll notice that the temperature begins to increase, but our performance goes down. Why? Well, it's trying to maintain those low temperatures. We limited by 40 degrees Celsius, so the maximum it can reach is 60 degrees Celsius before it throttles back. And as you can see, we're getting abysmal performance, 0.05 speed on this transcoding. We've told it to go below 40 degrees Celsius with its 100 degrees Celsius cap, which is what most Intel CPUs would have. And now it's stuck at 60 because 100 minus 40 is 60 and you're gonna get 60 degrees Celsius as your new cap. So this is very useful if you care a lot about thermals, you don't want your fans to start spinning up for no reason. Not really useful for me, I, I love performance and speed and stuff, but this could be useful for some people. I'm gonna quickly go change that back because this is genuinely painful to look at. So as you can see, running that again without that limit of the temperature, it runs at much more <laughs> respectable speeds. Anyway, that was me, Denshi, with a tutorial on how to undervolt your CPU and even limit the temperature. I hope you enjoyed. Goodbye.